This is the parts kit for the three and a half inch metal cloak dual rate rock sport edition lift kit. All the parts you need to get it done. Dual rate springs, rock sport shocks, all the goodies. You know it wouldn't just be a lift kit if it didn't have some good stickers to go with it too. My only suggestion would be when you do order it, it only comes with uh, one set of brake lines for the front. I would get the get them to send the back set too so that way you bleed your brakes just once and you're done. And uh, that's one less step when you want to expand it out to the game changer too. Well, let's see how this goes. Pull this little one off right here on both sides. It's an 18 millimeter. I had to go to the store to get one. Every one of my sets, guess what? Went from 17 to 19. So, quick trip to the auto store around the block. Money. Now, the top changed up a little bit. Put that box in on this side if you look right here the size changes from 18 to 19 millimeter and then slide you 18 millimeter socket on the back side mm -hmm. and get, get your wrenching like that i guess that's probably be the best way and just kind of work that Until you back that all the way up. Retain some of the stock hardware because you're going to reuse some of this. So what I did was the bottom right here. I just kind of left it in there. I want to go back with the new one. And uh, yeah, moving on. I sprayed everything down with some penetrating oil before getting started. While I'm doing this, I'm looking at that steering stabilizer I got under there. That shock. It looks like it's mounted nice, but that's a factory shock on there. I wonder if I can just change that shock out or if I have to change all that stuff off on there. down there and we look into it. I like to upgrade that. I know there's going to be a lot of bumps and stuff like that. That's medical kit supposed to be a great riding kit. So Let's move the front track roller. so I don't lose it and uh, go look at the other side all right so we get to the passenger side so a lot of folks got high tech tools I got this one size fits all shock off on the driver's side now there's a 5 8 nut right here and 
the 5 8 opening box in for that opening right here. What I do is I just have this just sitting in there and kind of bound against the top of the shock tower. And then I'm going to back it out right here, turning it this way. And as it does that, that nut's going to just walk up right here. That's the plan anyway. Let's see how that <laughs> save you the agony of me watching me fumble with this wrench right here but we get it off we'll come back on on the bottom all right so pulling that bottom out so that's the 18 in the back 19 in the back Same thing on the passenger side. I got a 258 wrench. I got one kind of halfway stuck up there on top of that nut, and this other one spinning this back out. It's going to pull out. I bet if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, that was it. That wasn't that bad. Anyway, like I was saying, I bet if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, sitting around the house watching this. Probably went to sleep by now. Damn, we'll take that back one out. They send with the kit are the same length as the factory. The only difference is those have like metal braids. They're just a better, a better, uh, better brake line. So I think I might hold off on changing them out until I get all four. And then I do it all at one time. That way I can only have to bleed, bleed them off and stuff one time. Yeah, I'm definitely clean up on here. That, that'll make Jason proud. We get the other side.
Yeah, that's right. Oh, that helped. Perfect. A little cleanup. I'll put these bump stops in here. Pretty simple. Cool little hockey puck over there. Put that bad boy right there. A little metal piece on the top. Appropriate size bolt. They got a few of them in the bag. That's gonna mount that up. I'm saying a metal cook, I'm gonna need two of them because I'm running 37s on here. But uh, maybe three, but I'm gonna put two because I'm, I'm gonna cut this fender all up. That's gonna be fun. That's another thing we're coming to soon. I might just cut it up. So Start off with a little couple pilot holes. Center that thing in there. Once we got it centered, we'll go ahead and uh, spin it up. Make it happen, Captain. A little cleanup. This is why I've been trying to back off the whole dog on time. Run it off, I was trying, what the hell's going on? And this side is going to give you problems because there's a this exhaust right here so it might now one thing I'm definitely not going to get a get a power tool in there so let's see there's a 10 or a 12 let me get the wrench to get that off of there alright let's get here. So this heat shield is a number 10. So back that out. Give us a little bit better access. That other one just kind of flipped up out of the way, which is cool. This one not so lucky. Well, you 
tension on it though. Now, get this other side off right here. putting on the game changer I would leave them at that that length but um, since I'm putting on the uh, just the dual rate just the uppers I said to adjust it to 18 and 3 eighths um, then that, that should give me about the caster that I'm gonna need which is about five so um, if you measure from center to center you that 18 and 3 eighths and just turn it they say every full turn should be about one degree of caster so these are set, you got them hand tight, and let's install them. All right, so since I was under here, I figured I'd do these exhaust spacers. Let me back that out a little bit. So right here you got a 12 millimeter, and then up here you got a 12 millimeter. And then on the other side, you have two 12 millimeter. Now those are easy to get to. Those are easy to they're out. This one, socket got it out. This one right here is a little bit harder to get to. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get onto that. But, um, let's see if I can get my hand in there somehow. It's tight everywhere you look at it. There we go. So I just kind of stick my hand in there and get after it. It's kind of hard to do. Okay, so the exhaust space, and we got put those in. So I took these bottom bolts out here, took the bolts out there, and I'll just try to figure out how to I'll spray this part a little bit. Oh, that's not pretty easy. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to put a pry bar here, give my extra room to put the spacers in. Spacers. Want some hardware. That's what we're using at. I'm going to start with the driver's side first. Since that was the hardest side to access.
All right, so install this outboard shop. Now, I drill a couple holes. Now, luckily on my Rubicon, I have a hole here already and a hole here already, so I don't have to drill those. It's just going to be one more hole that I'm going to have to add in there. Try to get it to go. Hopefully we can get it. That's going to be this hole here. Pretty much sits on there like that. I'm going to hammer that on there. I think we'll get my hammer. Right, so this is what it looks like. Got a spacer in there. These all run up tight. Let's see if you can see the Oh yeah. So we got one and two in there. Both of those holes were on that side. I didn't have to drill any right there. So now we can uh let's see. Put that shock in. Pink. Go read the instructions. Alright, so let's install the shock. So we got the rock sport shot. So it has a big washer, rubber piece, another little piece that has a washer, a thin, thinner washer that has a little protruding part. That's gonna go up through the shock tower. And then you have rubber washer, that washer I just dropped in the net. So that's gonna go in there. recommends this thing be set to 33 inches center to center so that's what I've done 33 inches adjustable part comes down to the bottom the bend goes over around the you jump over here it'll sit in here like that Now I gotta try to take it and pull it to the other end over there. So let me go around. I gotta rig that up with a rack. Well, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So let me explain what happened. So I lift it up on the axle, put the strap right here to pull the whole thing this way to me to get it recentered. 
tapping my bolt through because this right here it was a tight fit and then now I'm gonna run this up and it's getting dark all right Sway board disconnect now so they send you two different a rear and a front pair of sway bar disconnects just know that the the fronts are are longer if you touch them up these are actually m0919 you look on the back and when we get to the back back set i'll, I'll tell you what that number is it's really close but i mean this is pretty much straightforward boom and boom you know so we'll make this happen using stock stuff Metal provide you with a washer a nylon nut put on there now these are for the Rubicon edition that has the electronic sway bar disconnect there's no adjustment here, it's just the bar. All right. Okay. So that's everything in the front. Finally. Went through our spray painted. Took all the rust off of those rusty bits. Got everything else back in there, tightened up, tarked up. That gold looks good. All right. All right, we're back in business. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pull off this sway bar end link, swap that out with that 12 and a half, change out this spring for the dual rate, um, change out the shocks, the rock sports shocks, and then there's a bracket sway bar like relocation kit that we need to put on here. And that's it. That shouldn't take too, too long. Hopefully we can get it done pretty quick. Let's get started. Two 16 millimeter bolts to remove at the top of the shot. Hardware. Drop 
that there's one right there. Five thirty seconds on the front, seven sixteenths on the back. Yep, it's all here too. I disconnected this for now. It's stuck up here. That extra couple of inches just in case. All right. And then you attach the rear bump stops down here. Set them up however high. It says in the instructions of whoever you discuss with at Metal Club. this track or relocation to get in there. So we'll start off by pulling this bolt out. in real quick because I realized that after I put this relocation bracket in there that I wouldn't be able to get to the spring as easy. So and then on the bottom of the bracket you have to tie it with this lower control on. So we're gonna have to take that bolt out of there.
folks. Almost. Oh yeah, look at that. That back side. Tell you what, babe. Can you grab this and pull it to you a little bit? From the other side of Jack? Pull it to me. From the other side of Jack. Ow. Okay, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's caught your jacket. Okay, wait now. Okay, pull it just a little bit. Okay. A little bit. There you go. You can let it loose. Thank you. You're a good helper. All right, so that's what it looks like installed. That right there, I was lucky to have that one. Saved me a trip from the store. But all this is all tight now. I forgot to put that spacer in here. Just run it up, gives it a lift. Now, let's see if you can see it right here. I'm doing all this, this tube came disconnected. Some vent tube for this. I think I might have to get a longer tube or put an, an extension on there that way for when it articulates and don't pop off every time I don't want to get water in my axle because that would suck I disconnected this from the top up here this was connected there just gives it more room to flex now, I'm not 100% sure about these brake lines like I was saying they go to that disconnect kit I'm sure another folk knows what they're talking about. It's going to be fine, but I'm going to keep an eye on them anyway. All right, so next we're going to put the uh, shocks and the links on. And then the tires. And I think that's it. All right, put this end link in here. Socks in. A bit crazy view for you. There you got that one right here. We'll get that in here in a second. Put that on there. Run this one up. So this, this is it. Everything installed, tightened up, ready to go. Add that game changer later on. We can replace this track bar, upper and lower, control arms. It'd be nice. 
Let's put it together. Let's put some wheels on.